Hi, my name is Darth Parry and I'm a solution engineer at iTential. Today's video is the first in a series of videos where I'll be showing you how to use the various features of API triggers within the Operations Manager application. Today's video focuses on how to create API triggers and what you need to do to define the job variables to map the data in the request body to the input parameters of the workflow. But first, if you'd like to be notified of more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Ops Manager has a whole bunch of really useful features, which I won't go into today, but I will provide links in the description below to various videos and data sheets that we have on the application. Uh, what I really want to focus on is the ability to trigger workflows from Operations Manager. Um, just to move things along, I did create one uh, quickly before I started the video um, for the purpose of this demonstration. So. When you create an operations manager item, you associate it to a workflow, which you can see here, uh, the Ops Manager API trigger demo workflow, which we'll be diving into uh, later on. But what I want to talk about is the triggers. So there are four in total that you can create. There's a manual trigger where you present um, a form to a user to capture the data. Uh, you can schedule a trigger uh, to initiate at a particular time of day, so daily, weekly, monthly. It's really useful for maintenance events. Um, or you can do uh, event-based triggers where IEP can subscribe or listen to certain events coming from something like a Kafka messaging bus and then starts workflow based on uh, messages it receives. And then the final one is the API trigger where you can um, define specific endpoints that can then be consumed by northbound systems. So this could be a service order management, service order management system like ServiceNow or even a webhook configured in something like Netbox. And it's the Netbox one we'll be uh, looking at today. So um, as you see, I've selected that now. I need to provide it a name. So um, if I use something like API trigger demo, and what I'll do is I'll specify the route that I want to expose to the northbound system um, to be the same name. Um, we'll ignore the JST and the schema thing. Those will be discussed in the later videos in these series. So, so I've now defined my uh, trigger, and this is the endpoint that um, will be exposed northbound to be integrated into your system, in our case, Netbox. So if I save that now, that's now um, created and it's now enabled. So um, what I then want to do is I then want to be able to um, leverage that from Netbox. But before I can sort of capture my workflow or define my workflow to capture data from Netbox, I need to understand what Netbox initiates as uh, part of its web, ho web hook integration. So the easiest way to capture or understand the data that comes from a northbound system um, in a web hook is to use a website like this called Webhook Site. What this um, does is it provides you with a, a unique URL, which you can then use for testing purposes. So you just come here, you create new, it defines a new one. So what we'll do is we'll just copy that to the clipboard. And then um, in that box, I've already got um, a web hook that I've defined already that um, will be triggered whenever um, a device in that box is updated. So it's a type net box against the DSIM device object. I'll just check that's enabled. And then what I'll do is I just copy over my web hook that I've defined. I paste it here. Okay. So then what that does, once I save that, is if I then come into Netbox and I have one of my devices here, and if I edit the device, so let's just check the status, hit update. What should happen now is once that's updated, if I come back to this site, what we'll now see is this is the data that Netbox sends out when it triggers a web hook. And it's this data that I want to capture in my in my workflow. So for testing purposes, um, what I find easier is if you come to something like Postman um, and we'll look at the, the JSON that um, comes out from Netbox in Postman. So if I paste it here, we can have a good look at the data and then we can start collapsing things. So the first thing is that um, to capture data from an API, what you need to do is you need to map the top level keys, so event, timestamp, model, etc., username, and you need to map those to uh, job variables in the workflow. So, um, so what would happen is, is 
to test this, this is the endpoint that we'll be using, operations manager trigger endpoint. And then I need to paste in the, the endpoint that I've defined in my ops manager trigger, which is this one here. So what will then happen is when I send this, it will trigger this workflow and it'll kick off my workflow, which will then um, send this data. But I want to start capturing this data within my workflow. So if I come back into iTential and I come back to my workflow that I've created, because it's very, very simple at the moment, is I've got a, a single query here. And what I want to do is I want to capture the data field. So to do that, I define a job variable and I simply call it data because that is the name of the key that I'm capturing. I don't need to capture anything specific within that data. So I'm going to leave the query blank for this instance. And then what I'll do is I will just change the summary and the description. So if I hit save, I save that workflow. And now when I come back to Postman um, and I issue the request, what should happen is it should kick off the workflow. Which it has done. So if I then come in, let me duplicate this tab and let me go to job manager. Completed jobs. We'll now see that we've got the ops manager API trigger demo has completed. And if I view that job, what we'll notice is that this query has captured the data in that data field. So if I come here, we expand this. This has been mapped to that query. So if I then wanted to use any of that information, I would then reference the outgoing data from that query in further steps of my workflow. But let's just take one thing, a couple of things a little bit further. So let's just do a clone this a couple of times. And what we'll do is we'll just do something slightly different. So we'll connect all this up. And what we'll do is we will now capture the information defined in snapshots. So let's create a new child, a new variable called snapshots. And what we're going to do is we're going to capture the pre change. And we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to capture post change. And then this will allow us to potentially do a diff. So change all those up, save that save the task, come back to Postman, and let's issue that again. So it's kicked off the workflow. And if you come back to Job Manager, we go to our completed jobs, we'll see we have a second one. And if I look at this one, what you'll notice is that these now capture snapshot object which has got the pre-change and the post change in it but if I go to outgoing what you'll notice is that this is just the, this is just the data for the pre-change and the post change and then from this on point on you can then start using that data and you can do all sorts of so the other thing you could do is you could do a merge you could do a JST anywhere where you can manually define and set up the job variables you can then um, capture those within the um, within the data. So let's come here now and let's just come to the web hook and let's update that to point to um, our workflow. So if I come here and I delete that. So that's now, so that web hook is now pointing into the iTential instance. So let me go back here and let me trigger that webhook again. So I'll set it back, do the same thing, change to active. Maybe I'll change this to um, a different version just for testing purposes. And then we hit update. What hopefully what we'll see now is if we refresh the jobs, we should see a third one. We do, excellent. And we come in. And then let's say, for example, we look at the post change. What we'll now notice is that 
the data has now changed to what we did so active and if we scroll down you'll see that that's now changed to 19d and if you look at the pre-change object which is on the which we always capture here that's 18c and status offline so that's it couldn't be easier anyway i hope you found this video informative if you did please click the like button and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and until next time i'll see you later